some massive breaking news from about an hour or two before SmackDown, and that is some WWE departures. First of all was Baron Corbin. He confirmed this himself on social media. This sparked the topic, and then very soon we got news from Fightful Select that Indy Hartwell and Tegan Knox will also be leaving WWE. I genuinely feel like Tegan Knox never really got a fair crack at the whip. I feel like Tegan Knox wasn't really given a lot of opportunity. And Indy Hartwell as well is just as surprising for me, maybe even more so. I mean, it's just now that Candice LeRae is seemingly getting featured on TV more, which in turn is putting Indy on TV. Obviously, she is the wife in kayfabe of Dexter Loomis, who is now in The Wyatt Six. And you've got to believe that was something that we could have looked at as a future potential storyline and potentially could have put a rocket ship on Indy Hartwell's career. Per Sean Ross Sapp, it seems that Baron Corbin was made aware his contract was expiring and WWE just was not going to renew Corbin's deal. And it seems that Tegan Knox and Indy Hartwell have a 90-day non-compete. So that would indicate that WWE has released them from their current WWE deals. This is Things You Might Have Missed from WWE Smackdown. Make sure you hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button too. Jimmy Uso tonight would plead with Roman Reigns, the OTC, regarding Jay Uso. Well, Jay, he wasn't far away and he'd come to the ring and he'd plead his case. Jay would tell Roman straight, he doesn't want to be the right-hand man anymore. Any disrespect and Jey Uso is out. He said that you don't have to be my tribal chief, be my cousin, and we'll show Solo Sokoa what's going on. Jay wants this because Solo cost him the title. It's nicely looped together. Got to give WWE some credit there. Obviously, Roman Reigns would hear Jay out, and one word, yeet, would signal the reunion. One by one, the fingers to the sky. The OG bloodline back together ahead of Crown Jewel. The crowd tonight went absolutely cuckoo bananas and rightfully so. This is a huge moment, but it's just such a shame. Spoilers are out there last week. I could not avoid this. So many people thought this just happened after the show. They didn't realise tonight was being pre-recorded. Everyone was sharing this and it was very hard to not see this spoiler. Nia Jax would kick off this week's SmackDown coming to the ring talking about her Crown Jewel Championship match with Liv Morgan tomorrow night. Liv, Raquel, Dom would come to the ring followed by Tiffany Stratton and Tiffany pretty much called a shot in saying that she's going to cash in at Crown Jewel. However, Tiffany wanted to know if she took Liv's title, does Dominic Mysterio come with it? What the hell has Dom got? If it's like an aftershave or something, someone let me know in the comment section down below immediately. This would set up our first match of the night between Liv Morgan and Tiffany Stratton. It was a decent little match with Liv Morgan picking up the win. After the match, though, Nia Jax went absolutely cuckoo bananas, hitting everyone with a briefcase and then annihilating Liv Morgan. Nia standing tall tonight. Does that mean she might do the same at Crown Jewel? We'd seen Nia and Tiffany in the back a little bit later after this match. And I think from when Liv hit Tiffany with a briefcase, look at the size of that welt on the head of Tiffany Stratton. Oh my God, that had to hurt. Let's talk about the new Wyatt Six tweet, shall we? Obviously, this is from Raw Talk, a picture they tweeted out of Dexter Loomis on the bus of the Miz. Now, at the bottom of the photo on the side, it says, there you are. Obviously, the Wyatt Six once again finding what they were looking for. I think the caption of this tweet is the most interesting part for me. The forked tongue serpent. Now, obviously, in the Bible, someone with a forked tongue is said to be deceitful. Now, that is the Miz, isn't it? They've been saying and branding him a liar since this feud began. Forked tongue is deceitful. It is a liar. Therefore, it is the Miz. As fireworks go off outside my house... I find it interesting that the Wyatt Six continue to talk about The Miz. Karrion Cross is talking about Uncle Howdy and Bo Dallas every opportunity he gets. The Wyatt Six seem to be ignoring him. 
is that what they think of Karrion Cross? To the why at six, is Karrion Cross irrelevant? Candice LeRae would team with Indy Hartwell tonight, taking on Bailey and Naomi. Super awkward as we got the news a few hours before SmackDown that we touched on earlier of Indy Hartwell's release. I think what made this match even more awkward was hearing Michael Cole, even during the match on commentary, talking about Indy's dream to be a WWE superstar was because of people like Bailey and Sasha Banks. Just makes you go, eh, broken dreams. Do you know what I mean? The result of the match was Bailey and Naomi picking up the win. The Street Profits would pick up the win tonight, defeating Pretty Deadly. Very fun match. B Fab got a nice little highlight, slamming down Elton Prince. Very focused Street Profits. Obviously, we saw their reaction to losing to DIY the other week. So, interesting to see where they're going now. But, guys, we got some good news. Pretty Deadly the Musical now has a script and we can exclusively reveal you know we bring you all the latest breaking news here there are words in the script it's real it's happening pretty deadly the musical when kevin owens would do like a video tonight where he would claim he didn't want to hurt randy alton and he wants randy alton to remember that because now he's going to this is a totally different Kevin Owens. And obviously, Randy Orton last week begged Triple H for this match. He made Triple H give it. Triple H did not want to do it. I'm so invested in seeing what this new Kevin Owens is going to be like at Crown Jewel. The Motor City Machine Guns will be guests next week on the Grayson Waller effect. So potentially like a mini feud here. Ahead of the Fatal 4-Way Women's Tag Team Championship match that takes place at Crown Jewel tonight, we would have a Fatal 4-Way of one of each member of each team. And I've got to be honest, potentially match of the night. This match was absolutely amazing. There was so much going on in and out the ring. I think a big talking point is Lash Legend would have pinned Bianca Belair had it not been for Chelsea Green getting involved. The end of the match saw a KOD from Bianca to Lash, followed by a moonsault from Io to Bianca, and then Io pinning Lash Legend. Earlier today, WWE hosted the Crown Jewel kickoff show from the WWE experience in Saudi Arabia. And the crowd were brilliant. Absolutely love that. Well done, guys. Now, obviously, the Crown Jewel Championship. We got some major news regarding it from Triple H. Both the men's and the women's belts will stay in Saudi Arabia. Not a big shock for a lot of people, but they're going to be on display at the WWE Experience. And the person who wins the belt will get a Super Bowl-like ring. And obviously, he said that it will see over the years how many superstars can accumulate over time. This is obviously going to be an annual event for Crown Jewel now. This is going to be the new thing every year. So I'm going to assume like it's possible like Cody Rhodes becomes like a three-time Crown Jewel champion. Something I found interesting was there was loud chance for NXT by the Saudi fans. There was also chance for WrestleMania, but Triple H really didn't entertain that. He did, though, entertain the idea of talking to Sean and a possible NXT in Saudi show. Ahead of tonight's main event, Randy Orton caught once again looking at the WWE Championship. Those seeds keep being planted. It was Imperium versus Randy Orton and Cody Rhodes in a very fun main event. Obviously, this was just a like filler match getting towards Crown Jewel, and it makes a lot of sense to do that. Cody and Randy would pick up the win tonight, but the big story was afterwards. Kevin Owens attacking Randy Orton before Cody could assist Orton. Gunther locking in the submission, putting Cody to sleep before Crown Jewel. Solid Smackdown. I think the bits I didn't see spoilers for were absolutely top-notch. Spoilers do take you out of the show, and I will account for that. For me, a solid 6 out of 10 tonight. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, like the video, share the video, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace!